those guys. In one year and a day, we're going to be experiencing something very, very rare here, a total solar eclipse, and we will be in prime viewing position here. Northern New York reporter Isabella Colello shares what the city of Watertown has in the works for that very special day. They are calling it the total eclipse of the park. In exactly one year, the North Country will witness the 2024 solar eclipse. Watertown and surrounding areas are in the path of totality, which means the area will see the moon pass directly in front of the sun, creating a temporary night in the middle of the day. And the city of Watertown has big plans. For the better part of a year, we've had an eclipse committee that has been meeting to talk about what we can do to kind of capitalize on this as a community because we have the potential to draw people from essentially across the globe to Watertown to experience this once in a lifetime event. Choosing the city's Thompson Park as the perfect viewing area. At Thompson Park, we have the advantage of lots of open space, which is great for accommodating a lot of people and also an unobstructed view. So people will be able to sit on kite hill or really anywhere else in the park where they feel that they have the best point of view and have that unobstructed view of the eclipse. Leading up to the event, visitors can expect lots to do. We will have all sorts of vendors, we're hoping, uh, food, different kinds of exhibits, educational activities for children. So it will be a mix of different things with the main activity obviously being viewing the eclipse. And although it's a year out, you might want to book a hotel fairly soon. We do expect the hotels in town to sell out. We have a lot to offer here. And this is a great opportunity to show all that off to people who will come for the special event, but hopefully return sometime in the future. All the reasons to be right here in the North Country this time next year when the skies go dark. Reporting from Watertown, I'm Isabella Colello. In one year, technically actually a year today, April 8th, 2024, we will be at the epicenter of probably the biggest astronomical event of our lifetimes. That's why I was asked Jim Teske to join us here. Yeah, actually people will be coming here from all over the, the world for the total solar eclipse. Joining us now is SUNY Oswego physics professor Sashi Camber. And uh, thanks, thanks for joining us, first of all. Thank you for inviting me. It's great to be here. Well, first off, let's let's talk about this one and compare it to the one that we had most recently, which is in August of 2017. What's the difference and why is this one such a big deal? The difference is uh, the 2017 one was a partial solar eclipse. This will be a total solar eclipse, at least from our location. And that's why it's a big deal the, from any particular region in the Earth you'll only get a total solar eclipse every 100 years or so. So that's why it's a big deal. <laughs> wow, and, and, for, and for this one in, in our neck of the woods, Syracuse, Oswego, I mean, yeah. we're the only spot in the world that's gonna be able to do this, right? Well, there'll be other spots in America, yeah, but in the US where there, there will be to a total solar eclipse, but we'll have a very good viewpoint from here, a uh, totality of about three minutes or so. Okay, and it'll be a little bit less in Syracuse. I think it's a little bit more than a, a minute and a half. You know, right. we, we see a lot of things with uh, meteor showers, lunar eclipses, mm -hmm. but is it safe to say that this may be one of the bigger astronomical events any one of us will see in our lifetime? Correct. I mean, so solar eclipses, are re uh, you can see three or four of them every year, but a, to a totality one like this will be every... Eight, 18 months or so. And as I said, from any given particular region, it's once every 100 years. So in that sense, it's a, you know, it's a, it is an important event and you should not miss it if you live in this region. Um, of, of course, we're, we're hoping for clear skies. And yeah. as Jim and I were talking, I yeah. think uh, the other day, this actually would be the perfect weekend for it. Um, but Correct. we know we know what early spring is around here in central New York. You know it as well um, up at Oswego. Um, Will it be noticeable even if it's cloudy? So if we get clouds in here, what, what might it be like? Well, you'll definitely see it get, you'll notice it'll get dark. You'll notice it'll get much colder. So you, if it's cloudy, you won't be able to see the sort of atmosphere of the sun as the moon comes in between, covers the main disk. But you'll definitely notice the temperature drop. You'll definitely notice the darkness. The sort of nighttime animals and birds will, will notice that too. Mm. And, it's two or three minutes, so they might start to make noises and oh. think that it's nighttime. Yeah. So you might not, you'll definitely notice those things. 
Now, knowing that Oswego is going to be in a prime location, I'm guessing you guys have some things planned up there in Oswego for when the eclipse happens. Talk a little bit about that. Okay, yeah, we're going to have some uh, public outreach events. We're going to have some let talks and we're going to have some planetarium shows. We have a state-of-the-art digital planetarium here. And we, what's even more exciting is that we managed to be, get ho be part of a NASA grant and we're planning to launch a number of weather balloons both mm -hmm. before, during and after the eclipse to study how the atmosphere changes uh, during an eclipse. And we'll have a bunch of students who will help us to do that. And we're hoping to have a, a lot of community involvement in that. And hopefully uh, there'll be some you know, local dignitaries who will be able to help us mm. launch the balloons weather balloons. Uh, Tashi, would you, would you expect that people would be actually traveling here to see the eclipse from maybe other parts of the country, the world, or something like oh, yeah. that? Yeah. I would definitely expect that. There were, uh, in 2017, the, a, a number of us uh, went to Arizona to see, uh, to see the total solar eclipse there. Mm -hmm. So there were, there's no reason why people should not travel to Oswego to see the total eclipse wow. from around the world. And just briefly, we only have about 15, 20 seconds. What is that experience like? Oh, it's fantastic. I experienced a total solar eclipse in 1999 in Hungary. I was at, at, a, social, at a conference and it was really fantastic. I had to put my jacket on because it was so oh. cold. You know, you've, without that knowledge, you really feel that it's something, without the knowledge that it's just the moon coming in front of the sun, you really feel what it must have been like for ancient peoples to have to experience that event. Mm. Interesting. Uh, Swigo Professor uh, Sashi Kambert. Sashi, thanks so much for, for talking to us now. Like I said, we got a year to keep uh, okay. talking about this, so thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Have a good evening.